Hi, my name is Victor Bart. Welcome to Retro Machines. Here we have two identical uh, dual Pentium 3 machines with Intel Nightshade motherboard. So let's test them out and see if they still work. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you want your circuit board design realized and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design with worldwide shipping. Place your order now, links in the description. The systems are in pretty deep to you uh, rack mount cases and they are really in a rough shape. And here on the sticker I see July 2001. Here also July 2001 and for the rest it's really difficult to read because the sticker is scratched away. And here on the front we have www so probably they use those as uh, web servers. So uh, yeah let's uh, see what we uh, have here. We have rack mount ears, power and reset some LEDs here and uh, dust filter for the intake. Floppy drive, a 40 speed Philips CD ROM player, and this one has a 48 speed uh, Philips CD ROM player. So uh, let's take a look inside. They are pretty similar, but not completely similar. This one has two SCSI hard drives, this one has only one uh, SCSI hard drive, and there's a different power supply in it. And uh, this is from the brand Target, so that's not the best brand, and this is from Seven Team. So they probably didn't spend much on the power supplies. The machines are super clean inside, so the dust filters really work. And they did some cable management, and here the SCSI cable. So uh, let's take a closer look on the motherboards and see what CPUs we have. The motherboard is made by Intel, and this is an Intel Nightshade. And it has two ESA slots, four PCI slots, no HCP slot, four DIMM banks. All uh, populated with memory, so let's see what we have. 256 megabytes uh, per stick, non-ECC. So we have one gigabyte of memory. So that's a good amount of memory for 440BX, that's also the maximum. We have two Intel Pentium 3s, 450 megahertz with the stock Intel coolers. They are pretty decent. We have SCSI on board here with an LSI chip. And here also a 50 pin SCSI connector. Uh, two IDEs, the CD-ROM players also IDE and a floppy controller and the Intel motherboards were always rock solid. So we have two PS2, parallel port, one COM port, VGA and a network card. But here inside we have an extra COM port bracket and a bracket for uh, USB. But it's not in this machine. And in this machine the PCI bracket is missing so we can't uh, put extra cards in this machine so I need to find one but in the other machine it's still in. Here we have a pretty big PC speaker we can add an extra fan here we have two fans in the middle two fans in the front the power supply is in the middle so we have an internal extension cable and the layout of this system is pretty decent every space is used and there's enough room to cable management and system like this so let's take a quick look on the other one and then try them out. And the hard drives are Seagate Materialist 9 gigabytes, and there are two of them. So uh, let's take a look at the other machine and see what uh, there's different. Uh. So here we have another hard drive, a Quantum Atlas 4, also 9 gigabytes. I think it's just 7200 RPM, same cooling setup. And the second system has a PCI riser and an Intel network card and some really big memory modules. So let's take one out and see <laughs> what this is. This is also 256 megabyte PC100 but also non acc but double high uh, memory. I don't really see these big modules that often and it's really strange that it's not ECC and so big. So uh, let's put it back. This was probably one of the first 256 modules and they probably paid a lot of money for it. And the CPUs are also Pentium 3 450 megahertz. But this one has uh, custom coolers. So I hope the fans are not worn out because the 5 cm fans uh, had that problem a lot. Oh, 
Oké, okay, no magic smoke yet. It makes noise, that's always a good sign. I hear the hard drive spinning. I feel a good airflow. So the cooling was probably fine, otherwise things can burn up. The monitor is uh, getting a signal. The keyboard is working. Two CPUs detected. Uh, Night S zero. Yes, this is a Nightshade N four forty BX. Okay, the keyboard is working, but I can't skip the. Ah, I can skip the memory test. Huh? Two hundred and fifty-six megabyte. I need to check how much memory it is. Ah, sign by Scusi BIOS. Non-violet settings where infrared memory was reprogrammed. Okay, there are two Scusi controllers and one hard drive. And it is ultra wide Scusi. CPU zero failed in the station on last boot. Check date and time. Yeah, probably the battery on the board is empty. Yeah, the time is uh, reset. Yeah, the standard Intel BIOS, so not that much to set up. Let's do full boot and see if there's still an operating system on the hard drive. So, uh, I think there will be Linux on, but I'm not sure. I really hope there's Linux on it, then it makes this machine cooler. Not all the memory is detected. Ah, Linux, Debian, uh, kernel 2.6.18. Not sure which Debian this is. I hope it boots up without a kernel panic. But no hardware is switched, so probably that will be fine. Cool, we found Linux machines. The hard drive is not checked for 45,000 days. <laughs> but also the the uh, time is now not correct, so maybe this is completely uh, wrong. <laughs> but it's funny to see it. But no errors yet. Uh oh! <laughs> the file system uh, check correct errors on the root partition, blah blah blah. Let's uh, turn off the camera and let this machine boot. Uh, and if it gives more than the error, I will put it in. And otherwise, we will switch to the second system. Okay, the second machine also turned on. Two CPUs detected, and the Intel machines are just rock solid because they are using super high quality components like the. Caps are always fine on the Intel boards. Let's see if this one detects more than... Uh, yes, this one detects more memory. So the other one we still need to reseat the memory to see if it detects it all. Or it's just super weird memory modules that are broken. Okay, all uh, memory is detected on this machine. So let's also enter the BIOS. And this is probably also running Debian. Same non-violet settings were invalid. Two hard drives detected. Also here the BIOS battery is uh, empty. So they gave similar errors. Let's see what OS we have. Okay, this is quite annoying. I can't skip the memory counting. And it has one gigabyte of memory. So this takes a minute or something. Oh, Lilo, not even Krupp. <laughs> so maybe there's a different Linux distribution on it. I hear a hard drive ticking. Hostname, ADSL Voice. So probably this was a voice server for uh, an uh, ADSL uh, connection. VLANs. IP f version 6 or over IP4 turn link. 18 at null link not ready because I'm not plugged in. Yeah. 
Linux is now waiting on a timeout because uh, the network is not plugged in. Error, temporary failure in name resolution. I really hope this one boots up. Okay, this takes forever, but I will let it uh, run for a while. Awesome, this uh, error timed out, so it's now booting uh, further. And as also uh, SSHD and Asterix PBX Internet Super Server. <laughs> I love old uh, Linux. Sweet, this machine is uh, booted up. It has Debian Linux testing unstable ADSL2 voice. ADSL voice is the host name. Some uh, IP numbers, but they are all local. Root, password, enter. Shit. <laughs> Root, caught. I don't have a password about this machine, but that is not a problem because I don't really uh, want to see the data on the machines. I just want to see what was the function of it. But it was probably a voice server for a uh, DSL uh, line. So uh, let's see if we can reseat the uh, memory of the other machine to see if that's still uh, working. Okay, let's turn off this machine because the power supply gets really hot. And I saw that the fan is not uh, spinning up. So probably this power supply is uh, also not that great because this is a target power supply. Let's see if we can open it. The warranty seal is still closed. So they never did some maintenance on it. And I think it can have broken capacitors. Yeah, and smells burning, so I think I'm right on time, so I really need to replace this power supply. But the uh, capacitors all looks fine. Okay, this uh, block is super hot. And I see something that's probably not correct down there. Okay, this power supply... Uh, will go into the bin, but the machine itself, the hard drives are working, the CPUs are working, the memory is working, so we have a great find here. So let's check the other machine, if we can uh, uh, see if the memory uh, will show up. Otherwise I will just replace it with another set. Maybe this is just one of the early sticks that are probably not the most reliable and the fans uh, are uh, broken on this one they make a lot of noise and a grinding noise but let's take out some of the memory okay this sounds super horrible and I removed two sticks, so let's see uh, how much memory it detects. Okay, now it detects all the memory. Okay, 512 uh, megabytes of memory detected. And the 440BX uh, chipset is really my favorite uh, retro chipset. And with the memory support you don't have to use ECC memory, but it is supported. So uh, this uh, memory configuration with normal memory works probably fine uh, for this uh, machine and for the server tasks. Okay, all the memory is detected. So reseating the memory did the trick. So we have two working systems. Only I need to swap one power supply, but it was from the brand target, so I would swap it anyways. So what should I install on those two machines? I think these machines are really great for the Retro LAN party. I can install like Windows 2000 on it, make game servers or maybe the network management server. But only one has two network cards, the other one is missing the uh, riser bracket. Both cases are really scratched up, so the paint is uh, not in original state anymore. So what should I do? 
should I just repaint them like purple or yellow or orange or bright green or something crazy? And then probably on the LAN party we will scratch them again. So uh, <laughs> it would be nice to give them like some kind of cool uh, color. And these cases are also uh, lightweight enough to bring them to LAN parties. So that's also a bonus. And they stack nicely together and then yeah. I think I have a really great find on those two. So. If you like to support me, you can support me monthly on Patreon and join my uh, awesome Discord server or use my Amazon affiliated links. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my Unimog channel. Yeah, I have an Unimog and it's awesome and a channel about that. So check it out in the description.